Hello, my name is David Phillips and I'm the Chief Harbourmaster of the Port of London Authority and I'm here today to welcome you to our video briefing for skippers taking part in the Thames Diamond Jubilee River pageant. This is a unique and hugely exciting event and I would like to thank you for preparing properly yourselves, your boats, for taking part in our rehearsals and for joining in with the event itself. Our goal is to make sure that we all have the most fantastic day on the 3rd of June, a day that we'll never forget. But the River Thames is a challenging and occasionally hazardous environment and we need to make sure that all you skippers are aware and briefed of the hazards that you may face and that you have some idea on how to deal with these hazards. Now let's have a look in detail at some of the hazards that you may come across. The picture you see before you now gives you a snapshot of what the route will be like on the day. And the first thing you'll be aware of is that it's a river and in fact it's a narrow river and you will have to navigate your boat through 14 or 15 bridges. In the 18th century, they only had London and Westminster bridges to worry about. And furthermore, you'll have other bridges to, to concern you during the, both the mustering and the dispersal phases. The next hazard is the tide, which on the River Thames has considerable power and strength. Although on the day of the pageant, the Thames barrier will be closed. Nevertheless, on the days preceding and after the event, you will at some stage have to deal with the spring tide. Spring tides at full strength on the Thames can run as fast as five miles an hour and in some places even more. A Thames tide will also rise and fall by over 20 feet two times a day. So please do ensure you know what the tide is doing and the effect that it will have on your own boat. The River Thames has many obstructions in the shape of bridges, piers and moorings. Imagine yourself as a skipper of this narrowboat, looking at that view in front of you. How can you find a way through? And again, picture yourself on the motorway in your car. How many motorways can you remember with all of those obstructions? What I'm trying to point out here and to highlight is the need for you all to keep a proper lookout. We have been planning for this event for almost two years now. And throughout this entire process, all of our planning has been steered by three key principles of safety. The first principle is to keep a proper lookout. It is a responsibility of every skipper to keep a proper lookout at all times by all available means. The second principle is separation. The third key principle is like with like, keeping like-sized vessels together. If two similarly sized vessels collide, the impact of that will be significantly less than if a big vessel hits a smaller vessel. And now here's what I would like you to do in order to prepare your boat for the event. Firstly, on arrival at the Thames, please ensure that your boat is ready for scrutineering by the Port of London and Maritime and Coast Guard Agency surveyors. It will be very helpful if you prepare a check-off list in advance which you simply hand to the surveyor as he steps on board your boat. Secondly, I need you to read and understand the passage plan and most importantly, adapt it for your own particular vessel. The passage plan will contain a considerable amount of useful information. For example, the least depth in this extremity is 0.3 metres above chart datum. This is marking a shallow patch. Next, do not line up for arch 4 until all of these moorings are abeamed to starboard. If you do line up before those moorings are abeamed to starboard, you may well find yourself aground. Your passage plan also contains graphics showing you what to expect as you move down river and what is in front of you. In this case, you'll notice a series of numbers on the top and another series of numbers in coloured boxes below. The numbers on the top represent the maximum height in the centre of the arch and in this case arch number two has a height of 10.2 metres above chart datum, arch number three 11.8 metres above chart datum and arch number four 10.1 metres above chart datum. Underneath the figures represent the minimum height across the entire width of that coloured section. In this case reading from the left 9.9 .9 metres 11.2 metres and 9.5 metres, all above chart datum. There is also an accompanying photograph which emphasises using the same colour scheme 
which arch you should be going through. And finally, I need you to read and understand the pageant instructions. You need to read these in close detail and also in conjunction with instructions given to you by your section leaders. In close of the pageant instructions is a schematic, a diagram, which will show you the position that your vessel is occupying within your particular squadron. It will also show you which of the yellow, blue or white arches that your vessel needs to proceed through. I'm now going to run through a few key points that you need to do on the day. Make sure you only have the specified number of people on board. People out in the open should be inside the cockpit or wheelhouse so that the risk of falling overboard is minimised. Passengers should be seated so that the helmsman's view is not obstructed and must not sit on cabin roofs or outside guardrails. Make sure people on board wear life jackets when necessary. Have your anchor ready to deploy. Where appropriate, have your VHF radio switched on and keep listening to it. Please, please, please keep a proper lookout at all times. This is the most important thing that you can do. Don't drink and drive. This will be a long day requiring full attention and concentration from the skippers and their crews throughout. This is a joyous occasion. Let us not spoil it by carelessness or drinking to excess by people in charge of boats. Be ready on time. And lastly, do what the Marshal for your squadron tells you to do when he tells you. Finally, here's what we've done with the organisers in order to deliver a safe event. Marshals, we are providing over 100 Port of London Authority mariners to help control and marshal the event. Safety boats. Along the route and in the flotilla, you'll see safety and support vessels. 55 safety boats for the rowers alone. 30 boats and crews provided by the Port of London Authority, which includes launches, salvage craft and a tug. 24 workboats provided by Thames commercial operators. 15 lifeboats from the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Several police boats and fire boats. Emergency lane. We have an emergency services lane, or hard shoulder if you prefer, for vessels that get into trouble. Cleared the route. We've removed vessels from moorings and piers. We've scoured the river of driftwood and rubbish. We've issued notices to mariners, drawn up special charts and run special tidal calculations. And we've set up miles and miles of moorings for vessels in Barnelms Reach and the Pool of London. We must all thank the Environment Agency for their huge contribution to the day. They are in the Thames Barrier, which they close monthly for test purposes in order to make sure that the barrier is working properly. But once every year, they need to do more detailed testing over a very much longer period. The gates remain closed for several hours to conduct many technical checks. This year, the additional restrictions on normal river traffic between 8 in the morning and midnight resulting from the pageant and its preparations, provides Thames Barrier staff with a unique opportunity to test the current engineering design in practice without any additional disruption to river users. The barrier closure in June will begin at around half past nine in the morning and depending on the tidal conditions, conclude by about 11.30 that same night. Holding the test closure on this date has additional benefit of ensuring more stable tidal conditions on the river in central London, enhancing the safety of vessels taking part in the Jubilee Flotilla. So thank you to the agency, and I want to add also some more thank yous. Over a hundred people from many places participated in working groups to develop the passage plans, freely giving up much of their own time and helping the Port of London Authority to develop a safe plan for this utterly unique event. We had people from the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, Thames Rowing Clubs and other rowing and canoeing and kayaking organisations, the Association of Thames Yacht Clubs, the Lifeboats, the Police, London Fire Brigade, the Association of Dunkirk Little Ships, the St Pancras Cruising Club, the Dutch Barge Association, 
London Port Health and almost all the commercial Thames operators. Since November 2010, these groups have been meeting almost monthly to develop the passage plan and safety management for this event. This event is unmatched in the modern history of the River Thames. With a thousand boats taking part, it will be spectacular. It will be a sight that you will never ever see again. And this will be a day when you'll be glad to say, I was there. But we also want to ensure that it is a safe and fitting event to mark Her Majesty's reign. And so if you do have any questions, then please don't hesitate to ask either Port of London Authority staff or the organisers. We are all here to help.